Hey, I'm Angela Walters from Quilting Is My Therapy, and in this video, I'm facing my fears and tackling a quilt that I've been putting off for way too long. So I have a confession to make. I have been putting off this quilt for a lot longer than I'd like to admit. In fact, I will not tell you how long I've had this quilt. But the thing is, my friend Jennifer Keltner gave it to me to quilt and said, take your time and do whatever you want. Well, the problem is, I was too scared to start it. I've been quilting for a long time, but I've never quilted a wool applique quilt. So when she gave it to me, I put on a brave face, I acted like I wasn't scared at all, but I thought, oh no, I don't know what to do with this. Well, I've been feeling guilty because I keep seeing it hanging up, I keep knowing that she's waiting to get it back, so I'm gonna have to just load it and face my fears. So let's see how it goes. So my biggest problem right now is deciding what thread to use. I have a couple options. I normally would go with a light tan, but I feel like this is gonna be a little too thick. Maybe this color, but not that weight. So the one option I really probably should consider is the monofilament thread. So if we look on here, you're not gonna see it at all. Kinda of think it'd be fun to be able to see something. If I were just doing outlining, or maybe if I do anything in here, I'll definitely use this thread because I think that's gonna be the ticket. But what I'm leaning towards is this micro quilter, which is super, super thin, but if you look at it, it's the right color, but it's gonna just kinda disappear in that, and I think that's gonna be the ticket. So I'm gonna use this for any background fill, and then anything at all that I have to put inside the little birds, I'm gonna use the monofilament. Knowing what needles to use can be so tricky, but what I love about some thread companies is they'll have the information right in there for me. So I need a 16 needle. I guess all that's left to do is to get started quilting these cute little birdies. I know my only job as a quilter is to not mess it up. I'm gonna to try to use quilting that enhances those shapes without overwhelming them, and hopefully the result will be as good as it looks like in my mind. It's fairly basic what I'm putting in the backgrounds, but that's just really because I don't want it overwhelming the beautiful birds and all the detail that she put in there. Like all those little bitty teeny things. I mean, those are so small. Here's my fingernail. They're smaller than my fingernail, that's crazy. So I'm keeping the quilting very, very basic. But I feel like in the border, I can do a little bit more detailed quilting. So I think what I'm gonna do is do a little stitching in the ditch, maybe a little echoing. Maybe add like a leaf or something over here. I think it needs some leaves. And it's hard to see in the video, but that makes that just pop up ever so slightly. If you look from the side, look how much higher that is. And I'm gonna repeat on both sides and fill in the rest of that border. Little guys, get in the way. Get back. Get back. Well, and I'm already running into problems. Turns out my quilting foot loves to try to get stuck on all that beautiful detail. So I'm gonna have to switch up my feet to the glide foot. And even though it's something I don't use all the time, I think it's really gonna help me on this quilt. So this is the glide foot, and what's great about it, it's like a little bowl shape. What that means is if I'm quilting around, let's say this thing, it's gonna kind of move it out of the way without quilting it in. I think it's looking pretty good. I love the detail in the border. I'm leaving this all unquilted because I'm gonna come back and do that with the monofilament thread. I'm gonna finish rocking this quilt out, having way too much fun, and I'll show you what it looks like here in a little so bit. So look at all those tiny French knots. The problem is I would normally wanna leave it unquilted, but it's such a big area. I wanna make sure it doesn't puff out and stick out too much. So what I'm doing, I don't know if you can see, I'm quilting a gently wavy kind of line in between every couple of rows. There's a line of stitching right there. What that's gonna do is help hold it down, but hopefully not make it too noticeable that there's quilting in there, because I really don't wanna take away from all those amazing little knots that she did. Once I get done quilting around this last bird, then I'm going to start quilting around all these details. It's probably gonna be more time consuming than quilting the backgrounds, but I can't wait to see how it turns out. When I'm quilting around the details in the birds, I'm not quilting around every single thing. I'm just picking one or two elements that I wanna show off.
For instance, in this bird, which is adorable, I don't think I'm gonna go around every single little one because I think that will just make it look kind of weird. So what I'm gonna do is maybe pick a few, maybe one here, or maybe pick a couple random ones throughout, but just picking a couple elements will keep the quilting from taking too long, but also keep it from looking too overwhelming. You might be wondering why I'm digging around in my laundry bag. The thing is, I'm having trouble with breaking thread. I'm looking for a sock that doesn't have a match to it so I can cut it up and use it to help my stitching. This will work just perfect. So I'm having a lot of trouble with breaking thread, but my main culprit is this. It keeps jumping out of my thread guide right here. What would help that is if I had a thread net, but I don't because I left it at the shop. So I'm gonna MacGyver my own thread net. So here is the sock that is going to become my new thread net. And what I'm going to do is just chop off this part. And in a year when I find the match to this one, I'll have enough for another thread net. This stretchy part is going to go right over the cone of thread. And what that's going to help do, that's going to help that thread come right out the top. All right, let's see if this helps. the quilt and I love how it turned out. The quilting is doing exactly what I want it to do, not overwhelming the quilt top. I really love how that light tan thread and that thinner weight really lets the quilting just sink into the wool and keeps it from overwhelming the quilt top. And I think she's gonna love it as much as I do. So what about you? Do you have a quilt top that you're scared to quilt? Let me know all about it in the comment section below. Thank you so much for watching and happy quilting.